Tesla's robo-taxi in Austin has now expanded. This is live and official. Plus, Tesla vehicles were seen validating FSD in Kyle, Texas, which is 20 minutes from the current Austin geofence. Looks like Tesla will expand to this area as well, and that's when it'll show how quickly Tesla moves. Second, Tesla has now officially received a permit to operate autonomous vehicle testing in California, albeit first with a safety driver. And it looks like Tesla has officially applied for operating an autonomous vehicle in Arizona, both with a driver and without. Here we've got um, tariffs. So Trump just sent these tariff letters to 20 countries starting August 1st. That's pretty soon. 25% on Japan, South Korea, 30% on the European Union and Mexico and Canada. These are our major trading partners. That's a lot, 25% yep. and 30%. Then you got 20% and so forth for all these other remaining countries. Tell us uh, how this impacts Tesla investors. Uh, the, these are these are on the higher end of where people thought that that these were going to land on July 9th. That's the first takeaway. Slightly lower than what was the larger announcements in the beginning of April, but really, really on the heavier side. So these don't go into effect until August 1st. So it looks like there's a window of time here to negotiate but we we haven't seen a lot of breakthroughs there yet so this will be interesting to see but this is basically to me this was a this is another round in the negotiation where it looks like the u.s did not get everything that it was looking for in terms of uh you know gives from the other side so they really come in and these are i would say these are fairly heavy the you know mexico canada uh south korea japan china i mean these are you know most of the trade and of course, the European Union. Most of the trade we do with the with these uh, with these economic entities. That's most of our trade. So, I would say this is a fairly big deal. To keep an eye on Tesla is not immune to this. There's also sectoral tariffs that were announced in the last week on on copper. Uh, we only produce about forty to forty five percent of the copper we consume in the U.S. The rest we import. So. This is something definitely to keep an eye on. We don't know exact, you know, we don't know Tesla's exact numbers in terms of what they use internally versus what they import. Uh, this is definitely something to keep an eye on. There's more sectoral tariffs uh, coming, so uh, definitely keep an eye on the space. Thank you so much, Jeff. Yeah, you're the person that keeps us updated on this, and like you said, this is likely the biggest impact to autos, electric vehicles, and others. But good news is Tesla is launching RoboTaxi. Launched it at least uh, three weeks ago now, exactly three weeks ago. And everybody was wondering, what's going on? How come they haven't expanded it? Well, they expanded it. And there's a lot of good signs that this is going to move faster than we realize. So people are already saying, oh, it's been three weeks. They're so slow. They haven't done anything. Well, no, <laughs> slow. And then all of a sudden, boom, things are moving fast. Take a look at this. We got this announced last night. Ashok Swami said the new geofence is up. They released a new RoboTaxi app update. I got it. And you open it up, you can see that they've expanded their service area. <laughs> this is a little bit funny in terms of the shape of Austin. Down below is where Tesla originally started their RoboTaxi. And then they expanded it to include this extra area here uh, where <laughs> Tesla RoboTaxi says, we're big eggplant fans. Uh, but if you compare it to what Waymo is, which is in the blue area, you can see that it looks like Tesla's is a larger, Jeff. What's your uh, estimation of that? It's, it's about four, mile, four miles in area. And I think the thing for everybody to keep an eye on is just the pace of the rollout. This is m much faster than other competing robo-taxi services have done. And so I think the key is to keep an eye on yeah. the, the pace of the rollout and of course the quality of it. And so far the quality of it's been been good. It's been as expected, if not better. And uh, the key for Tesla is they've got the AI, they've got the AI framework and infrastructure for this to, if they were not human limited in terms of people that are both monitoring vehicles, safety drivers and so forth, my guess is they would be rolling out even faster. So. It's going to be interesting to watch the capability and quality of the system as that improves and the, and the need for human oversight to be removed or reduced. That That is going to be the key because I believe right now that their AI is outpacing their ability to staff it. So Jeff, like take a look at this, right? This is the area 
that us that in in pink that uh, <laughs> Tesla did. Obviously, it's a joke, right? He's having a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I'm just thinking that they're not going to leave it like this for too long. Like they just did this for fun, you know, this shape, right? They might expand it soon enough, sooner than we realize. And take a look at this. This is right. This is where Waymo is, and so, like you said, they're already going to be equal to or even four miles square miles larger. But there's already signs <clears throat> that Tesla is expanding in other areas of Austin. This is 20 minutes away from Austin, a place called Kyle, Texas. They're already validating FSD there. This is, look how far away it is. This is where they saw these cars testing. So it's possible that they're going to expand it even faster and just boom, boom, boom. Like, why not, right? Yeah. If I can do this much, well, why can't I do more? Except, like you said, it's not really about the FSD, right? It's about the uh, the operations. Yeah, I I think I, I would I could see them expanding to all Austin city limits, and then just going continuing to go broader because that's the thing with this system. It's not you're not going to be conf confined to being inside of major cities. If you're in a suburb and you need to go to the airport, and it's 20 minutes away, you'll be able to call. A Tesla robot taxi, and it's going to take you there. So, yeah, the, the, I think the pace of the rollout is the thing to keep an eye on. We had the, we'll talk about some of the other announcements in other states happening. This is happening pretty quickly, and I think I think the market is definitely taking note of it as well. Imagine if you're in Austin and you got to choose, you know, between Waymo. Look, like I want to take a Waymo, and you go, but does Waymo go there? <laughs> I know also, you know, like more likely that Tesla's will, so I'll just go and choose that. You know, I mean, it's a huge differentiator. Mm -hmm. um, right. So this is Austin. Now, what's going on in California? And there's a lot of movement that happened just this weekend to show that Tesla is moving there as well. First of all, these were spotted in Monterey, California. So far, every time we saw these cars uh, driving around, like just now that expanded geo fence area, those cars were spotted there a week ago. So this looks like this is Monterey, California. And uh, true enough, this was these are being found. Tesla is officially listed as an autonomous vehicle testing permit holder in California. I'm a little confused, Jeff. I don't know if you know better than I do, but June 1st, so that was last month, Tesla was cleared to test self-driving vehicles with a safety driver. Okay, great. There's these, you know, you can see the name here. But uh, Omar said that it looks like they had this permit for over a year. So I'm kind of... Uh, I don't know which is part true or not. Do you know? Well, they've, they've been testing this with, remember, you know, FSDs developed in Palo Alto in the engineering office. So they've been testing with Tesla employees, even, I believe, even before Austin and the testing that was being done there. So, or it may have been in parallel, but point is, is for many months, they've been testing with employees. Yeah. So, and this is the entire list. So just, just to be clear to people, like, yes, it's important for Tesla to get the permit, but it's actually not, should not be difficult if they've, that particular state uh, has already given uh, permits to all these other states, uh, you know. Well, look, these uh, are proof vendors. of concept. Op these are proof of concept operations. Yeah. No, nothing here besides uh, the Waymo offering isn't any level of scale that's meaningful. So... I mean, yeah, I mean, I, it seems like the bar for the permit is, I, it'd be interesting to see what the bar is for the permit, but this is, it, what's, it, what's, I think it's going to be more interesting is the qualification be on the road at mass scale. I think that's going to be the bigger, the bigger yeah. thing to go after. You pointed this out and it's important to repeat it, right? <laughs> Every time somebody goes, oh, you know, this other company is doing this and you just go, well, they are proof of concept, tiny little numbers. They're just prototypes. This is different. This is like about to roll out as a real service and faster than Waymo that, that took years. Um, so that's California. There's now signs that uh, Tesla's making move in Arizona. So Sawyer found this that uh, looks like that Arizona Department of Transportation, Tesla did reach out to them on June 26, so a couple weeks ago, to begin the certification process to operate an autonomous robot taxi service in the state. Tesla supplied for both autonomous vehicle testing operating with a driver and without a driver. A decision on those is expected at the end of the month. So some states, um, depending on their rules, they when you first launch, they require you at first to have a safety driver. 
And then after you've shown some metrics, then they'll remove the safety driver. So it's not unusual to just get a permit with a safety driver at first. It depends on uh, the state. They have expressed interest in operating within the Phoenix metro area. This is the uh, letter that the email he received back from the Arizona Department of Transportation saying that yes, indeed, Tesla did apply for this. So I don't know where Phil got this, Phil Truby. He said that Tesla Robotaxi is looking like it's going to roll out in these cities next based on the, oh, okay, this is based on autopilot job postings. <clears throat> so it looks like that uh, Tesla is hiring for Tempe, Arizona, Henderson, North Nevada, Palo Alto, California, Jacksonville, Fremont, San Diego. So Fremont, San Diego, and Palo Alto. And then, boy, and then they're just expanding fast. So, But now Arizona and Nevada. <clears throat> yeah, multiple cities, warm weather cities, so year-round. Mm year-round service so this is yeah this is where you build the core out and you know you get the system stable you get it and you just get significant growth starting here and then you know as the ai continues to get better then you go to other basically go to other cities so this is i think the key again is going to be the slope of the line and in, in the rollout i think that is what is going to take people by a little bit by by surprise and that goes back to the fun, the design of the of their their system, and how their approach to FSD is, and then of course their cost structure. Both of those two things are the enablers to this rapid rollout. So when uh, horses at one point, right, nineteen hundred took over was was the main form of transportation. Everybody had a horse, <clears throat> and no one yet had a a car, a, a gas car. And then gas cars came in. It took eleven plus years for it to thirteen years for it to then take over. And Elon commented on that a couple of days ago. Here is his uh, photo that is a famous photo. I think uh, uh, Tony Siba would point this out. So on the left here, this is New York City, Fifth Avenue, New York City in 1900. And this photo, I, I know you can't see it, but they're all horse and carriage, except for this one photo here, one, one which is red, which yeah. is a, a gas car. In 1913, on the same street, another photo was taken and this one is the opposite. All of these are now gas cars, except for one horse. And then this guy said, Tesla Robotaxi will do exactly that to all non-Teslas. And Elon said, <clears throat> you know, accurate. <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming Tesla is going to have a calculator at some point available in the app or some, you know, something where you basically can put in your daily or weekly commute and it can calculate for you should you own a vehicle or not, or should you just use our service? And I think a lot of people are doing that math already, especially in, in more urban areas where you know, parking and car ownership is even more expensive. People have already done that. They do that math themselves. But I think as this expands and this becomes more ubiquitous, I think Tesla is going to have some sort of calculator for people that says, look, at some point, it actually doesn't make sense for you to own a car. If you just look at your utilization rate of you, your car sitting in your garage and what, you know, what value you're, you're extracting from that versus you could take the, those funds and that money and use it elsewhere. Cause we're going to supply you a very comfortable ride. It's going to be perfect temperature settings, perfect music settings, perfect everything for you at a much lower cost. And you're actually not the one driving. You just sit in the seat and, you know, and you arrive at your destination, I I think that's that's what's coming. It's, it's that equation for people of should I own a car or not. And then uh, just uh, we're going to come back to FSE, but before we move off of that, um, or, or grok into cars now, but before we move on that, Elon has been replying, and these are uh, things that Tesla's working on, Elon's working on. So last couple of weeks, everybody's so distracted with his political forays, but... Mm -hmm. uh, Things are happening, and uh, here he's talking about the bot. The rate of improvement by Tesla is insane. So, you know, you've got the initially the bots uh, dancing here. Uh, this is August 1st of 2021 when they showed the, just a fake human in a, you know, in a costume saying, hey, one day we'll build humanoid bots. Uh, four years later, now it's a full-on dancing bot. But uh, Elon replied saying, that's Optimus 2.5. Optimus 3 will have agility roughly equal to an agile human. You have thoughts on, on that comment? 
Yeah, it looks like it looks like this version of hardware is going to have significant change. It looks like they're moving more of the larger volume prototypes to to Optimus three, and it looks like it's going to have a, a, a fairly significant yeah fairly significant level of change. That could be a proof of concept on the right, and yeah. So this is a lot of the demos that we see both from all different bot manufacturers, you're starting to see them do interesting tasks, but in, in manufacturing, we have to get, not only do we have to get the, that task done, there's gotta be a level of precision involved with that task. There's gotta be a level of repeatability involved with that task. There's gotta be a level of speed involved with that task. Otherwise we'd have to be putting, we'd have to be putting more and more of these on the line and that you could actually run into a space issue, a constraint issue with space, constraint issues with energy, then bumping into each other. So you've got to get this to the point where when, when Elon says human level, he, he approaches, Elon approaches product and engineering, uh, from a like a bioelectronics uh, biomedical perspective which is really important because what what would the human be doing at that station in the factory what would their rate be how many hours could they work and this is how we have to think about power consumption with optimus this is how we have to think about speed and agility and precision with optimus because th there's going to be there's going to be areas of where there's you know you're not going to get the kind of return you need but to get the kind of precision to be able to do a lot of the labor that's done to build our electronics in Asia, for example, you're going to, they're going to have to do a lot of engineering work with the hand and, and, and then, and dexterity and speed and precision. So just speed, precision, those things are key in all of this. It's the videos are great, but we need speed precision. We also, of course, we need current train. We need the reliability of it as well. And that's the kind of stuff that we won't be able to see in demos per se, but uh, that's the, the mo most important metrics you're pointing out <clears throat> that we need to be tracking as investors. So another one is uh, he cryptically said this, just left the Tesla design studio, most epic demo ever by the end of the year, ever. This is pretty bold. It could be Bro Optimus. It could be Roadster flying. Um, what do you, what do you, Probably what, Roadster. What do you think? <laughs> I think a lot of the, I think Optimus is more of a an engineering and software. So the breakthroughs that are going to happen there are going to happen on actuator capability, mechanical design, so forth. Okay. Uh, so I think this is, I think it's the Roadster. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Very quickly, there is this, uh, 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 <clears throat> what is it, the Tesla Diner. It's about to open up in San Mateo. We're not going to spend too much time on this, but Elon did just say he went and ate there. Uh, and if you just go in, take a look, a close look at it. It's very it close cool. to opening. Yeah. I mean, it's inter is it a side <laughs> it's quest? What's the big deal? Why is this so important? I mean, it's just a restaurant. And he goes, I just had dinner at the retro futuristic Tesla diner and supercharger. Team did great work making it one of the coolest spots in LA. I don't know. I, I think it's bigger than what we think it is. It's not just a showcase. I think it could be an example of, boy, Tesla, if they wanted to, they can create restaurants. They can put uh, uh, bots in there. They can really redefine what it's all about. I, I think I think there's two things happening. One is, while Tesla does not advertise, this is for the brand. This is to associate, think of you know that image you had of cyber trucks parked outside of this retro futuristic a diner that they'll have they'll have an optimist in there or several of them in there and the idea is to, is number one is it's a brand thing of tesla is the future tesla should be associated with the future they could pop these up in major cities potentially the other thing is also just the introduction of this type of hardware and this type of autonomous hardware be it again cyber trucks and also optimus and having that kind of just walking around you um, I think it's kind of a, an, an introduction to it.